Hi. So when we do observational drawing, we want to observe or look at all of the details on something. So I have picked this particular red bell pepper to draw today. This one's plastic. It's not a real one, but it does look fairly realistic. So we're going to go ahead and use this for our drawing today. I want to look at how many bumps are in here. I want to look at the stem and what kinds of details might be in that stem. I'm going to look at the bottom. I'm going to feel it so that I can tell if it's rough or smooth and I know how to add those details when I'm sketching and drawing it in. And then I'm going to have my sheet of watercolor paper. So the first thing I want to do is I want to sketch what I see over here. And what I see are one, two, three, four, four and a half of those bumps really when I'm looking at my piece of fruit on here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and set it this way since I'm looking at it sideways when I'm on the screen. And when I sketch, I want to sketch lightly. I don't want to sketch really dark because eventually we want this pencil to disappear and I don't even want to be able to see it anymore. So if you can't see it on the screen, that might be why I'm sketching very lightly. I'm going to look at it just a little bit at an angle. Get that stem in there. And the stem I notice is wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So I need to reflect that over here. And then I'm going to put in the back couple of bumps that I can see. And I notice that this one's shiny. So right now, before I forget, I'm going to draw those white reflections from the lights in there. Now they're not exactly rectangles, but they're kind of like rectangles because our lights, if you look up at them, are rectangles in here. And sometimes they're bent because they hit one of those bumps and it makes them bend sideways, doesn't it? And if you look very carefully, they go really far down my edges. There's lots of lighter ones in there. I'm gonna make sure I get all of those in because then when it's darker down here and lighter up here, that's going to reinforce the fact that this is three-dimensional or it's round. And then I know I have, the stem was kind of rough. It had these veins in it, kind of like bark. So I'm going to draw those in. And I have most of my details on there now for my pepper, don't I? The next thing I want to do is I want to look at my watercolor pencils. These work a lot like regular colored pencils, except that when you put water on top of them, they turn into watercolor or paint. I want to select similar colors. So this is a red pepper. I'm going to select red. I have green on here, but I have light greens where the areas are reflecting, and I have dark greens for the areas where it's not. I'm even going to use, I think, a little bit of purple for some of the shadows that are in my red on here. Maybe a smidge of yellow for the lightest part of the colors that show up here. Otherwise, I'm really not going to use these other colors, so I don't even need to pick them up. I can put those back. Let's take a look at what it looks like now. So I'm going to start always when I'm tracing with my lightest color. So I'm going to go, since my light's kind of coming this direction, I'm going to go over just that direction of things with the yellow. Then I can switch to the next darkest color on there, which would be a light green. And I'm very gently shading because when I get this wet, it'll, a little bit goes a long way. So I'm gently using my middle color, not the lightest, not the darkest, in here. Then I'm going to go through with my dark color. going to add those darker edges to define the edges and I'm going to add those textured stripes back in there a little bit okay. I like that I'm going to switch over to my reds because my pepper's red I don't really have any pinks anywhere I only have light reflected areas that are going to be lighter reds I'm going to find those edges now I have to be careful here. You see where my red and my green are touching? That's going to end up being complementary colors. They're the opposite of each other on a color wheel. So if I blend those together accidentally, it's going to make a brownish color. I'm going to want to be careful to let one of those dry before I start painting the other one. I'm pushing pretty firm on the edges. Not so hard that I break the tip, but hard enough that it's giving me a nice solid edge on there. I'm going to do that around all of my white areas so I don't forget where to leave it white. And this was a little darker in here, but then I had a white space. And these spaces over here weren't bright white, they were light. So I'm going to very gently, very super soft, 
color those in lightly because they'll be more of a light red, a light hue. They'll have just a little bit of a tint in there. There's my white whites, nice and white. And this area over here is going to have a tint. Okay, I'm going to speed up the coloring of this part so you don't have to watch all of it. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to add in some of those darker areas with just a little bit of that purple. So very gently, where I know it's going to be just a little darker, which is near the bottom, sort of where those bumps round out, I'm going to add some purple. When I paint these together, it'll make it a nice dark red with kind of a purple tint. And that's part of being a good observational artist. You're observing the color differences in here or the shade and tint differences. So tints being adding white, shades adding a darker color such as black to that constant hue of red that's in there or color of red. I'm gonna really accentuate it down in here where it gets deep down inside this part. So you can see this is already starting to look a lot like a pepper. That's kind of three dimensional. The other thing we're going to want to add in is the cast shadow underneath, which is going to run right up against the edges and out a little bit. It's kind of an ovalish shape, so the cast shadow will also be a bit of an oval shape. And I might use a little bit of blue in that cast shadow too, blue and purples. A little darker here, lighter as it gets out to that edge. So now we have it finished in watercolor. The next thing we're going to do is add the water to the paper to turn it into a paint. Okay, so I have my water cup and I have my pointy paintbrush because I really want to make sure I stay inside those lines and I don't hit the white spots. And all I do is get it wet and then I just carefully pull it. I don't want to push it back and forth quite yet. I just want to pull it first to get it started. Then in the areas where there's more than one color, I might choose to push it up. You notice I'm only using the tip of my paintbrush. I never use the whole paintbrush just using the tip of it. And I'm going to do all my darkest areas first. And I'm going to carefully follow those edges. Speed that up for you. Okay, I finished those medium and darker areas and I'm going to rinse my brush off so I don't have anything but water in here. And any of the areas that were lighter colored, I'm just going to go through with one stroke. I don't want to do too many. It will cause other extra lines to show up. I want to keep these ones really watery because they were only a little bit lighter in color. They weren't completely white. They were more of a light red or pink type color. Just one swipe on those so that they're a little bit pinkish. Right? Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to start with the yellow into the green on my stem. And I don't want to overwork this because I want to keep some of that texture in there, right? Remember I put those stripes in there? So I'm going to follow those stripes and just go over it one time. Now see right there where it's bleeding into the other one? What I'm going to do is squeeze the water out very gently from my brush. I'm just going to tap that and pick it back up and squeeze it out. Almost like washes the paper off. You could also get a two-tip or a piece of paper towel to help you with that part. And the last thing I'm going to do is this drop shadow down here. Remember, I want to keep it around the fruit, but not on the fruit quite yet. I'm going to rinse out my brush. I'm going to soften that edge a little bit. And I'm going to kind of dip, 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 dip like that. And you notice you can carry that paint a little bit different directions. And if there's a place that I would like darker now, I'm going to take bit in here. Add some of that red and blue back and forth. Get those shadows a little bit darker if I want them a little darker. Don't want it to get muddy though. I want to be careful. So now I have an observational drawing that I've turned into a painting. After this dries, we're going to go back with Sharpies and trace around the edges to accentuate them even more. Now that this is dry, I'm going to go in and I'm going to trace all of my edges with a fine Sharpie and I'm going to add back in some of those details up here and around the edges. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, 
You'll notice as I was going through, I added some additional textures in there. I didn't always just do a straight line. Sometimes I did straight lines, dashed lines. I did some hatching and some cross hatching down here. Those are when you do those little lines. Cross hatching is when they crisscross on top of each other. When you're all finished, it can go in your portfolio. Don't forget to take a photo for Arsonia if you have time.